So Ezekiel 37, starting from verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me. All right, this is in Ezekiel. Ezekiel was a prophet, all right? And carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about and beyond. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord, you know. Again he said to me, Prophesy unto these bones and say unto them, O you dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live, and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise, and behold, a shaking, and the bones came together, bone to bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them, and the skin covered them, but there was no breath in them. All right, so let's take these few verses. Uh, very familiar because, like I said before, I was taught this, you know, 30 years ago. And when I, and this was the way it was explained to me, all right? All of us, we go through seasons like this. So we, all right, let's go back to verse 1, all right? We are sometimes like dry bones, all right? We are the dry bones. So we being dry and without the breath of God, so we need to come together and of course, get, well, undried. We should pray that we, sons and daughters of God, get together and make ourselves pray, come together, and let us pray that we become alive again. Because we go through seasons where we are so dry, where we don't have what it takes. And that was explained to me. And I look at it and I say, that seems to have some sense, but is it really true? I mean, is this what it means, all right? I've read to you eight verses, and it seems to me that that explanation is correct. You are dry. You are going through a dry season. In fact, it is so dry that you are dead. That's why it says here, it's the valley full of dried up bones. All right? Now think about the valley, all right? I just told you, come from Arizona. There's Death Valley over there. All right? Death Valley. And if you go walking there, California, Arizona, huge swaths of land, a desert. Plain desert. And if you walk there, you see animal bones. You see like the skull of the, you know, some animal which has long died. And the bones are left there bleach white by the sun and you just walk look and you see ribs you see you know like the tailbone coming out and so on and and that's how i imagine this that means we sons and daughters of god are dry and we need to be refreshed we need to come again pray together and ask for an infilling of the Holy Spirit. Because that's what it says. You have no breath in you. Because we need the breath of God in us to live. So, and my church 
back then, you know, we we're all gathered together, we we'll all pray, you know, we don't want to be dry bones, we don't want to be dead in the valley, we want to be an alive people. So we all prayed and prayed and prayed. And it was all good. But along the way, as I started reading more and more of the Bible, then I realized that there was something wrong with this picture. You see, what is Ezekiel actually prophesying about? Ezekiel was a prophet, all right? So remember in the Old Testament, very simple, all right? Very simple. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit has not been poured out yet, right? Okay? Only after Jesus went back to the Father, then He sent the come on, the Holy Spirit to us. So we have the Holy Spirit inside of us. Everybody okay so far? All right. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit comes down, rests upon the prophet or the king, all right, or somebody, and they will prophesy. The prophecy is always for a certain time period and it's for a certain event. So when it is finished, then the Holy Spirit will leave. Okay? And then the Holy Spirit will come down again and another prophecy will be given. So Ezekiel was a prophet. So the Holy Spirit came down on him for a particular purpose. And he started speaking. All right? So we just read this. So there is a valley. So he's prophesying now. All right? So that means God is speaking through Ezekiel. He says, look, there is a valley of dry bones. It is, and the emphasis is, very, very dry. And he says, it is dry, and not only is it dry, but look at what has happened to these bodies, all right? The flesh, the skin, he says here, the skin is gone. The sinews, the muscles, gone. Organs, everything gone. These bones are indeed dead. They are dead. But God says, I'm going to do something to these dead bones. And it seems so good. Yeah, you know, I am dead, but God is now going to make me alive. God is going to infill me again with the Holy Spirit so that I can become alive. And that's what we are reading here. Okay, but let's see what it says some more. We finish at verse 8, all right? So there was a noise, a shaking. Everybody, sh everybody in the church was shaking, you know, because they said, yeah, that's what it is, you see. There was a noise, and there was a shaking. And then the bones came together, bone to his bone. Sinews came together, muscles, the flesh came, and then the skin covered them, all right? That was verse 8. Verse 9 now. Then said he unto me, Prophesy unto the wind, prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind, This thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, breathe, breathe unto this slain, and they may live. I mean, we all wanted to live. We were so excited, so we were all waiting. Like, come, come. Holy Spirit, come so that we can live. Verse 10, so I prophesied as he commanded me and the breath came into them and they lived and stood up upon their feet, an exceeding great army. Yes, and we were all so excited. We were the army. We were this exceeding great army because the Holy Spirit came upon us. We were dry bones. We were without flesh. And then we all went back home. You know, feeling very good that the, mess, the message was great. Everything was very good. Now, listen to me. That explanation is a good explanation. But you see, it's completely inaccurate. Why is it inaccurate? All right? 
Why is it inaccurate? Because this prophecy is not for you. And you say, how do you know that? How do you know that, pastor? How do you know such things? Because the Bible in Ezekiel chapter 37, it goes on to explain what this prophecy actually means. So what does this prophecy actually mean? If it's not about us, then who is it about? You see, I don't have to guess, I don't have to go and pray to figure out the meaning because the Bible actually explains to us what this prophecy is all about. All right? So now you've known. There are dead people, you know, it's very dry and they need the Holy Spirit. All of that is good. But who is it for? So let's continue on now with the explanation as given by Ezekiel. All right? So verse 11. God says to me, son of man. Who is talking now? God is talking to Ezekiel, right? The Holy Spirit. These bones are the church. These bones are you and me. We are so dry. These bones are the, come on, whole house of Israel. This prophecy is for the Jewish people. The Jewish people have all been scattered. They are in, living in dry places outside of Jerusalem. All these Jewish people. Remember God says, when He asked Abraham, He says, you all, from your loins will come a nation. You will be my people. You are mine. All you Jewish people, you are mine. But look what happened. Because of the law came in, because you all didn't follow the law which you said you were going to follow. And now look what happened to all of you. You are all scattered in all places and look at your level right now. I don't want this for you. I am your God. I love you to the Jewish people. I don't want this for you. You are dry bones. Your muscles are gone. Your skin is gone. Look at what you are. That is not my plan for you. The whole house of Israel. Not some of the Israel, but the whole nation whom he has called by his name. So who is he talking to once again? He is talking to Jewish people. You see, for us to claim that we are dry is to refute the living water. Remember what Jesus says, if you drink of me, come on, you, you know this very well, you will never thirst again. So you cannot claim to be dry. That means you are actually challenging what Jesus said. That means Jesus says to you, okay, Harvey, if you drink of me, you will never thirst again in the spiritual sense, right? Am I correct? We all, we all know this. And then Harvey turns around and says, oh, look at Ezekiel 37. I am very dry. I am full of dry bones. My bones are dry. You know, everything about, I'm living in the desert. What? I'm just using you as an example, all right? So this is not true. Because I know Harvey well, all right? Harvey is refreshed every day. So, but if Harvey were to say that, then what Harvey is actually saying is, look, I know what you said, Jesus. But I'm going to go backwards and claim something in the Bible which is not for me and apply it to my life. So that means now I give myself excuses, I give myself reasons to be dry, to be worthless, to be not able to do anything. That means, oh, can you do this? No, I cannot, brother. I'm very dry. Can, can, can you uh, do this? No, no, I cannot. You know, my bones are falling apart. 
You know, I'm in a very dry place. I'm very thirsty. Every morning when I wake up spiritually, you know, my thirst, my thirst, you know, I cannot do it. And, you know, I have to come and get filled again with the Holy Spirit. I have to be filled with Jesus. And then we read passages whereby we say, the Holy Spirit comes and what? Come on. Lives inside of us. Does He ever live again? That means, uh, let us say, you did something and the Holy Spirit says, okay, sorry, uh, goodbye, you know. I'm gone now. Until you do something again, which I approve of, then I come back and live inside you again. Does the Bible ever say such things? No, of course not, all right? So you see, you have to, when you read the Bible, how I've always encouraged you now, is to read the whole thing. If I stop at verse 10, it actually, that explanation actually makes sense. And then you start to claim something which is not for you. You start to say how dry I am. I need, I need the breath of God. But you already have the breath of God. You already have the breath of God is the ruach, you know, the age. R-U-A-C-H, all right? That's the breath of God, all right? So every time you see in the Bible, right from Genesis, all right, to the end, whenever you see the breath of God, when you read in the Bible, you know that's the ruach, R-U-A-C-H, with the emphasis on the H. That means ru is, you know, lower to the H, all right? So the H is ha, ha. Come on, say ha from your throat. Ha. All right? Not, not like the French, pronounce it at your tip of your tongue. You know, like really good sounding. No, no, no. This one, you know, the Hebrew language is from the throat. You know, ha. All right? Ha. And that's the age. That's age. And we all know that age, all right? is He, which is the fifth letter of the Jewish alphabet, which means grace. All right? Ha! <laughs> so that's the breath of God. So we are actually asking God for something that we already possess. We are trying to claim to be dry bones when we are not dry. But that was the way I learned it at that time. And I actually accepted it until I read verse 11. And it says, well, it's for the nation of Israel. All right? So let's continue on. So what does it mean? Okay? They are for the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say. So they, in this sense, is who? The Israelites, all right? They say, our bones are dry. Why are they dry? Because they are outside of their homeland. They are scattered all over. And they are in foreign lands. And they are living there. Not in Jerusalem. And they cannot practice what they believe in. And they are under the influence of all types of paganism and everything. And he says, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost, you see. We are so far apart from where we are supposed to be. And we are cut off from our parts. So that's why, you see, all the bones are now separated. Every part of Israel, every tribe has been separated all over the place. Okay, let's move on. Therefore prophesy, God says, prophesy and say to them, this is what the Lord says, thus says the Lord. Behold, look, everybody, my people. Who are my people? God called them. Remember, it says, God says, you are my people. You Jewish, you Israelites, you are all mine. You are mine. I love you. I will open your graves and cause you to come up because you are dead. I'm going to call you out from your graves and bring you into the land of Israel. You see, they were, all the bones were scattered, right? And what was the prophecy that all the bones were, come on, 
come together, right? Bone will come attached to bone again, sinew will come up, you know, and then the skin will form over them. Wasn't that the prophecy? All right? And we took it to mean ourselves. But look at what it says. You are all scattered. You are dead in other countries. But I'm going to open up the graves and bring you, Jewish people, into the land of Israel. Okay, let's move on. And you, Jewish people, will know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves, my people, and brought you out of your graves. Next verse. And shall put, okay, and this is what God wants to do to the Jewish people. I want to put my spirit in, in you and you shall live. And I shall place you in your, come on, own land. That was a prophecy which Ezekiel says to all the people out there, all the Jewish people. You are all scattered, but I'm going to bring you into your own land. The bones which are all scattered, which are dead, will all come together. And Ezekiel saw it. There was a great noise, a shaking, and the bones started coming together. And he saw it all in a vision. Then shall you know that I, the Lord, have spoken it and perform it, says the Lord. All right? The word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, Okay, now, he's going to show you something about this coming together. Moreover, you son of man, that's Ezekiel, take one stick, write upon it for Judah. So, take one stick, all right? Take one stick. Write upon it, Judah, all right? And for the children of Israel, his companions, then take another stick and write upon it for Joseph, the stick of Ephraim, and for all the house of Israel, his companions. So one stick, you write there, Judah. Take another stick, write there, Joseph or Ephraim, all right? Now remember, the kingdom of Israel was divided back in those days, north and south. South was Judah and north was Joseph or Ephraim. All right? So there were, and these two nations, because the nation of Israel, which was 12 tribes, separated. All right? So north and south. So God says, look, take these two sticks. One you write the south, one you write the north. Are you with me so far? Okay, you see how it explains everything together? Okay, now let's move on. So now you have two sticks. And what? Join them, take two sticks, and join them one to another into what? One stick. And they shall become one in your hand. All right, let's move on. And when the children of the, the people shall speak unto you, saying, Will thou not show us what you mean by this? Why, what is all this meaning? Then you say to them, this is what God says to me, all right? And I'm going to tell you. Behold, I will take the stick of Joseph, one stick, which is the hand of Ephraim, all right? That's the north. And the tribes of Israel, his fellows, and will put them with him, even with the stick of Judah, the south and the north. That means all the tribes. And make them one stick, and they shall be one in my hand. So God says, my intention for the Jewish people was never to be like this. They were to be my people, a holy nation, a call-out people, holy priesthood. This was the plan that God had for the Jews. But what happened to them? Like I said, they all became dry bones, scattered about in all nations. But God says, no, I'm going to bring them back into their own land. All right, let's read again. Uh, next verse. And the sticks whereon you, where you write shall be in your hand before their eyes. Okay, so if any Israelite says to you, hey, what is the meaning of this? What are you doing? You hold them up. You say, there were two sticks, and now God says, I'm going to make it one stick. All right, next verse. Say to them, this is what God says, Behold, I will take the children of Israel from among the heathen. Ha. Huh. I will take the children of Israel from among the 
heathen, all those people out there who are not Jews, I will take them out where they have gone and will gather them on every side. I will gather them all again together and bring them into their own land. Last verse. And I will make them one nation in the land upon the mountains of Israel. And one king shall be king to them all, and they shall be no more two nations, north and south, neither shall they be divided into these two kingdoms anymore. All right? So now, let me ask you a very simple question. God gave this pro the first promise God says to Abraham, I'm going to make you a great nation. It'll be a, the nation of of the Jewish people, all right? Along the way, because they are very stiff-necked, very stubborn people, all right? They like to do what they like to do, so they ask for the law. Well, they asked for the law, God gave them the law. They couldn't do even the first commandment. People came, conquered them, and then they were spread in all nations. But God was still merciful because it's a God of mercy in the Old Testament. After the cross, it was a God of grace. All right? By the law, they're supposed to be punished. But think about it. A loving father having to punish his children. By the law, sometimes it has to be done. But the father takes no pleasure in that. You see, the father has a different plan for them. God had a different plan. But they were all now scattered. But God says, look, I am going to do this. And when I do it, nobody can stop me. He says, you're all scattered, you're all dead to the Jewish people. And he says, I'm going to bring all of you together. And not just some of you, but the two sticks will become one. And it's for all of Israel. And I will bring you... Okay, let's go back one, one verse again, verse 21. Let's go back one verse. And bring them, the whole nation of Israel, into, come on, their own land. But remember, Israel, after being conquered and everything, for years and years and years, they had no land. You see, there'll be a Jewish people living in Europe, live, J Jewish people living all spread out all over the world. But God says, I am going to bring all the Jewish people into one land. And in 1948, the United Nations United Nations, the body representing all the nations of the world, established the nation of Israel. And that was their land. And over the years, all of these people, Jewish people living in Russia, Jewish people living oh, you know, in America, Jewish people living so... And they all came back to their own land. Dry bones, Jewish people coming back because God wants them back into their own nation. And you see, this prophecy, there's only one, you see, you see, the prophecy came. So the bones came together, all right? Nation was established. The muscles came back. Strong economic, military power, everything came back. And then the skin came back. Israel is a beautiful land. The skin came back. One last thing. One last thing. Because remember it says, God says, I'm going to breathe upon them. But the Jewish nation didn't accept that as yet. But one day they will. And when they accept the breath of God, the grace the Ruach, ha, 
of God. Then they, remember? Their bones already came back, their muscles already came back, their skin is already there. And then when they receive what they were originally meant to receive, they will be an exceeding great nation. Exceeding, not just great, but an exceeding great nation. You see, this prophecy almost fulfilled, except for the last part. Now, you see, that's how you read the Bible. This prophecy is for the Jewish nation. And look at Israel today. Look at Israel. If you go there, you will marvel at what you see. You think, oh, it's just you know, walls and everything. No, it's extremely beautiful. And it's very productive. And Jews coming back from everywhere, exactly as prophesied. 